Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. I have often heard that this Sunday, which is Trinity Sunday, is the one Sunday that is most dreaded by many priests. In fact, it is said that some priests think ahead and will get a substitute priest to preach for them on this Sunday. Well, this pandemic has stopped that, and I did not have time to plan ahead for this. Otherwise, I may have been off today myself. But why do so many priests fear preaching on this Sunday? It is because it is Trinity Sunday and many priests get nervous about how they will explain the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, if at all. I will spare you the history about a theologian named Arius, whose belief about the relationship between God and Jesus went against those who believe in a triune God, and how this led Emperor Constantine the Great to attempt to unify the newly recognized Christian Church and remove theological divisions by convening a meeting of bishops at Nicaea. This meeting would become known as the Council of Nicaea, and lead to what we know today as the Nicene Creed. I will save all of that for a future forum, confirmation class, and or adult formation. It is fascinating to say the least. I would also draw your attention to the Creed of St. Athanasius, which is sometimes read on this Sunday. It is an ancient document proclaiming the nature of the Incarnation and of God as Trinity. It can be found on page 864 in the Book of Common Prayer. Trinity Sunday is the Sunday we celebrate the oneness of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We profess the relationship of each to the other in our prayers, creeds, and in the way that we live. Concentric circles linked together are often used to demonstrate the relationship of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One in three, and three to one. We believe in one God. To break it down even further, I will use someone from our congregation as an example. So, which one of you shall I use for the example? Let me use our senior warden, Corliss. So, Corliss is someone's wife, someone's mother, and someone's daughter. She is the one person who possesses the roles in the lives. She is the one person who possesses three roles in the lives of others. She has three roles, but there is only one Corliss. Trinity Sunday, according to the professor Judith McDaniel, is when we celebrate the most fundamental element of faith and practice, Christian relationship. The doctrine of the Trinity teaches us of the communal inner life of God. God the Father is with the Son, who is with the Spirit, who is with the Father, self-communicating, self-giving, self-receiving. This idea of Christian relationship as it relates to the Holy Trinity has always intrigued me. The thought of God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit in communion with each other. Working as one got me thinking, how might that translate to us and our world today? What does it truly mean for us as Christians to be in communion with each other? Our gospel lesson comes from the last four verses of Matthew's gospel. 
These verses are known as the Great Commission. Jesus, given all authority from God, has commissioned his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that he has commanded them. His last words of assurance to them are, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. However, even with these words, some doubted. After all, they had seen Jesus crucified, and now he stands before them on the mountain, asking and equipping them to carry on his ministry. This doubt is not a lack of belief in the risen Lord. It is perhaps a doubt that they are really seeing Jesus before them. Perhaps the doubt was fueled by fear. Do they dare hope and believe that this is truly Jesus standing before them? Sometimes, even when we have faith in that which is seen and unseen, we sometimes doubt our own ability to do that which we know we should do. Jesus assured the disciples that he would always be with them even until the end of the age. Jesus made that promise to us with the sending of the Holy Spirit. And even though we know this, we sometimes forget in moments of stress and strain. We forget that Jesus has equipped us through his teachings to carry out his great commission. None of us are immune to moments of doubt. These moments are often a sign that the Holy Spirit is leading us to make a difference, but we are not sure if we can or even should. I am not immune to this struggle either. In, semin in the seminary chapel at Virginia Theological Seminary, where I attended, the words, go ye into the world and preach the gospel, are stenciled above the archway as you exit the chapel. All of us seminarians at the time were so sure that we would be equipped to do this, but there are times now as priests where we find ourselves at a loss for words, wondering if we really can preach the gospel, wondering if we really can make a difference. Priests are often fond of saying, they, they didn't teach us that in seminary. There is even a book with a similar title. It is true. Seminary prepares you for a lot, but it does not prepare you for how to handle or address pandemics, protests, violence, and police brutality. These are things that require one to rely on the Holy Spirit and prayer. And sometimes we do not have the answers at the moment. And sometimes it's even best to sit in the silence and just listen. I have been asked by several colleagues how I am handling the situation regarding the death of George Floyd. I have even been asked how my congregation is handling it. The truth is that I do not know the answer to either. Our current situation of being away from the church and each other limits a lot of dialogue that we can and should have on this topic. To be honest, I find myself more concerned about you than about myself or what may be happening in this maddening world at any given moment. I do not think that I have allowed myself to fully process what has happened over the last two weeks in our country. At the moment, I do not have the words to, to communicate that to you. Instead, I find myself wondering if I am being a good example of a non-anxious presence. I find myself asking if I am doing enough for you. Am I being a good shepherd in the midst of this pandemic and moment of unrest in our nation? And I find myself asking what more can or should I be doing, doing during this time of crisis and uncertainty? Am I being a good shepherd? Perhaps you have found yourself at times asking similar questions regarding situations in your own lives. This doubt is not a lack of faith in what you are called to do or be. Instead, it is the Holy Spirit assuring you that although you may not be able to see the answer to your questions, your faith will make you well. I have learned that when in doubt, in despair, any time or anywhere, talk it over with Jesus. He will be with you until the end of the age. Matthew tells us in his gospel that some of the, the disciples worshiped the appearance of Jesus while others doubted. That should bring comfort to us knowing that faith and doubt are not mutually exclusive. What comforting words to the church, that it is not a bad description of any congregation. Some worship full of faith and some hold back due to doubt. Even though some of the disciples doubted his appearance, he still commissioned them. He had faith in them even when perhaps they did not have faith in him and or his resurrection. They doubted what was right before them. We can be thankful that Christ does not wait until we are full of faith, cleansed from all doubt, before he comes to us and utilizes us 
and his great move upon the world. This week has been full of turmoil and anger in the world and among many in our nation. Even as I had planned a totally different sermon, I had to trust and not doubt that this is what the triune God wanted me to say to you today. I had to just let the Spirit lead and trust that God the Holy Spirit would be with me during this time of presenting me with a message of faith, hope, and love. Our baptism serves as a reminder that we are in a permanent bond with God and in communion with each other. Baptism is the act marking a transition from outside the Christian community to discipleship within it. To be in communion with each other is to love each other at all times, to treat each other with dignity and respect, even when we may be led to do otherwise. Our bond with Christ reminds us that to be in communion with him is to also be in communion with each other. Jesus has commissioned each of us to be disciples. We have been equipped by God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit to be ambassadors for Christ. We are his disciples on earth. At any given time, God is with us, and thus, we are free to pray to any member of the Trinity, because these three are one. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, Early in the morning my song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. 